There are two main points to this section on using the normal distribution in measuring predicting. One is that you become proficient in working out confidence limits. So that's the confidence with which you can say that your measurement represents the true mean. And the second thing is to give an example of these basic statistics of the normal distribution and the standard deviation being used to actually model environmental processes which maybe is a little bit more interesting than just taking single measurements so there's those two things so the first thing is to be able to calculate confidence limits we've already decided we can't make a true measurement of a continuous variable and that what we need to do is to give our measurement and say how confident we are that the measurement is correct. So far you've worked out that you can, if you make an assumption that the errors in the measurement are normally distributed, then you can give a numerical measure of the confidence of your prediction by using the D value that you've calculated and knowing that 95% of the area under a normal distribution lies within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. Consequently, if you were to make your error bar 1.96 times the standard deviation, then you could be 95% confident that the true measurement lay within that area. That's the D value. However, what you haven't considered at this point is that we're looking at not the variability of a measurement but the variability of a mean because you've taken multiple measurements and you've calculated a mean. So that's number one variation of means versus variation of measurements. The second thing that's not been considered is the size of the sample. If you've taken a larger sample, if you've taken more measurements, then you would expect that your confidence would be higher, that you've got a representative mean. But in just using the D value in order to calculate your confidence, the D value takes no account of the size of the sample. So let's deal with the first one of those. Because we're looking at the variability of a mean rather than the variability of a measurement, we can actually reduce the size of the confidence limit. In other words, we can be more confident. The way to demonstrate this to yourselves is to use the student heights data so currently you have 500 measurements of student heights and you've worked out a mean and a standard deviation. But instead, if what we do is to of 50 and we can do that. we have in this column now instead of having 500 measurements in this column we've got 10 means of 50 measurements 
and if we work out the average if we work out the average is the same as the average of the 500 students but if we work out the standard deviation standard deviation standard deviation is only 0.8 rather than 5.81 so the standard deviation is much less because we're looking at the standard deviation of means rather than the standard deviation of measurements the distribution of variability of measurements whereas the distribution of the variability of the means of the measurements is reduced and the reduction is equivalent to dividing by the square root of the number in the sample and then what we have is the standard error so if we're looking at the variation of means rather than the variation of measurements we actually need to use the standard error rather than the standard deviation it's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number in the sample so you can see that the number gets smaller is to take account of the sample size because it must be the case that if we've taken more measurements we must have a higher confidence that our mean represents the true mean however this is not accounted for if we just use a d value so rather than using a d value to multiply by the standard error we use a t value. A t value is drawn from a t distribution. The same way that you drew the distribution for the d values, which is your normal distribution, there's a t distribution which is adjusted for the sample size. The t value is equivalent to the d value when the sample size is infinite. But effectively, once the sample size is above 30 or so, then D and T become similar but they're only identical when you've got an infinite sample size. For you to access the T distribution it's easiest to do that using the Excel function T inverse T INV T inverse. This function has got the arguments confidence level and degrees of freedom Degrees of freedom is where the size of the sample is taken into account. The degrees of freedom being the number in the sample minus 1. So if you type into Excel equals T inverse, then open the bracket. The first argument is the confidence level. And the confidence level we normally work at is 95%, which we'd write in as 0 0.05, and then put a comma. And the second argument is the degrees of freedom, which in this case we've written down as B3 because it was cell B3 that it's referring to. And in that cell, there'll be the number in the sample minus one. The result of this then is if we consider our measurements, 
say we've made two measurements and we want to know are these measurements different to each other we know that neither of them can be the true measurement because we can't make that measurement but we can put confidence limits on them so if we draw confidence limits at 95 percent first of all that would mean taking the d value of 1.96 and adding that as a confidence limit so plus or minus 1.96 that's 1.96 times the standard deviation with that we can say that we're 95% confident that the true mean lies between here and here. That's the point of a confidence limit. That's a confidence limit drawn at 95% and it means that the true value is somewhere between here and here. We don't know what the true value is but we're 95% confident that it's somewhere between here and here. However, from what we've just said, because we're looking at variation of means rather than the variation of a measurement, then instead of using the standard deviation, we should be using the standard error. And that's equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number in the sample. So that means that the standard error will be smaller than the standard deviation, which means that our confidence limit will actually get smaller and the same here multiplying by the standard error rather than the standard deviation and so we can draw new smaller confidence limits and that means that these two sites where maybe we're measuring metal concentration they're no longer overlapping their error bars are no longer overlapping so we can be confident that these two values are different to each other However, we then need to consider the second thing, which is the sample size. And the sample size, in this case, the sample size was three. Okay, the normal thing we would do is to make measurements three times. So if we're doing an analysis, we might do it three times. So you'll get very used to doing that, triplicate analysis. So if the sample size was three, then we shouldn't be using the D value of 1.96 we need to be using the t-value and if you look it up the t-value for n equals 3 which is degrees of freedom equals n equals 3 is n minus 1 so the degrees of freedom is 2 if we use the t-inverse function that will return a value of t of 4.303 so instead of using 1.96 which is the d value it's a d we're not going to use the d value we need to use t and that's 4.303 rather than 1.96 which means that error bar is going to double in both these cases and that means that these confidence limits or error bars are overlapping 
and so we can't say with 95% confidence that these two samples are different. So we can see then that we went from having an error bar drawn with a D value and a standard deviation to an error bar drawn with a D value with a standard error, which made the error bar smaller. But then we changed the D value to a T value, and that resulted in the error bar getting larger again. Okay. So your confidence limit equals standard error times the t value and the standard error equals the standard deviation over the square root of the number in the sample. Now you can practice this yourselves by doing this test where you're going to calculate confidence limits on metal concentrations that have been measured in seaweed as a biomonitoring exercise. So if you do that, you can practice this yourselves.